Christian greetings. Randy Pike back with you for another short shot from God's precious word. I want to talk to you briefly about this question that arises often about why are there so many denominations? When we were working in Australia for many years, this was continually put to me. In South Africa, it was a little, but not as much as in South Africa. Now, this is a question that the unsaved who in their heart are against the Bible and against Jesus Christ, the unique Son of God, they like to pull this rabbit out of the hat, then beat you across the face with it because there's so many divisions prove there's not unity, so they think. Paul, writing back to the church at Corinth that he started on his second missionary journey, I told some people on one occasion, if I had started the Corinth church, I'd be ashamed to tell anybody about it because it was in such a mess after Paul left it. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul writes to him and he touches on this. He talks about Apollos and Cephas. And he said, now some of you are saying, I'm of Apollos or I follow, I believe what Apollos says. Somebody says, well, I believe what Peter says. Somebody believes, says, well, I believe what Paul says. And whatever comes along over here in America, somebody says, I believe what Benny Hinn says. Somebody says, I believe what John Calvin says. Somebody says, I believe what this one says. Well, why don't we all get together and be one? Now, in reading Paul's letters, he continually dealt with the problem of division amongst Christians. And we will always deal with it. It will always be there. Now, that doesn't mean we try to get unity the best we can. But a church that's always having trouble, trouble, trouble with people who want to run off after this and run off after that, it's better if those people go find them somebody to run off after and stay with them. And then they won't have all this upset. Why so many denominations? Denominations started as groups early in, er, or later in the days of Paul and the early church group started. If you read through your Bible, you'll find where Paul talks about the church of God. Well, in America, we have the church of God. So they say we're the one in the Bible. You read in your Bible where Paul talks about the churches of Christ in Romans 16. Well, in America, we have the churches of Christ. So they say we're the one that's in the Bible. In one, I was reading yesterday where Paul baptized some people in the name of Jesus only. I remember when I was in Rhodesia preaching to the military, I had a chaplain as a driver and a bodyguard. And that chaplain was a good man and a great man, but he said, I belong to the church that baptizes in the name of Jesus only. And look, as long as we ride this horse, we won't be able to do anything for God. Now, denominations will always be. The first Baptist church in America was started back when the Pilgrim Fathers landed here in the 15 and 1600s. And if you'll check when the Dutch Reformed Church started or the, the Kert van Gott, the Church of God in, in, there in South Africa, you'll find this, there's differences. These things will always be. And let me leave this with you. You'll never find an assembly of people of any size who will agree with you on everything that you agree in or you agree with them. Now, the question is, is it major or minors that we're disagreeing on? Paul talks in Hebrews chapter 6 about the doctrine of laying on of hands. What? The doctrine of laying on of hands. Now, let me ask you something. Which is a major doctrine? The laying on of hands or Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to save us from our sins. Which is major and which is minor? Now on minor doctrines, we may courteously disagree. On the major doctrines of the Christian faith, we refuse to budge one inch on the major doctrines of the Christian faith. The problem with a lot of people, they think they know more than God. And they, they say, no, no, I believe the doctrine of laying on hands should be right. We should do it this way. And that way, if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. Well, you're wrong, buddy, if that's the way you follow. It doesn't work that way. You see, I spent many years in South Africa. And God knows I, I was called in to preach God's word in some places 
where no preacher has ever been called in to preach. Some of you remember that thing we had called the special branch security. Oh, I know it was hated, our boss, the old Bureau for State Security. Would you believe that they invited me to come and speak to everybody that wasn't on the field and the war commands was to preach the gospel only? Did I go? You better believe I went. They gave me one hour in a closed room with a guard at the door and there were several hundred men and women there and did I lay, what verse did you use? I used the verse, the, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I pointed out that intelligence officers are supposed to know all the answers. But I pointed out, do you know where real wisdom starts? It starts when you fear God and you let this fear lead you to the old rugged cross and the empty tomb. And you let it take it there and accept that as yours and are saved, then you are a real intelligence officer for heaven. But if you let it lead you to mistreat and overrun and rule and create problems that should not be, you're using it wrongly. So remember, you talk about your denomination. Why am I a Baptist? I'm, look, I grew up in the Methodist church, in the old-fashioned American, John Wesley-type Methodist church, where the women acted like women, dressed like women, lived like women. I remember as a little boy standing between my dad's legs in a Methodist church, an old pastor cotton called an altar call. I, I was about maybe four or five years old, and I saw those old people come down there, and get down on their knees and start praying. And I tell you, it sounded like a thunderstorm. And I trembled and I said, Dad, what is this? And my dad all said this. He said, Son, they're praying. They're talking to God. Everything will be all right. Now that's how it used to be today. Today, if somebody doesn't sit down and cross their legs like we want them to sit down and cross their legs, they're not right with God or they're backslid or they've never been saved. Listen, people, get off of that nonsense. The day is coming for Croydon and America and, and every, Australia and everybody else when these things will not be the, the issue. The issue will be, have you been born again? Do you know Christ as your Savior? And are you living a life of meekness and quietness trying to point others to Him? That's the big issue. You can have your denomination. We have to be identified today with a denomination, with a, not some of these screwballs, with a place where God's Word is preached. We have to be identified so that we can tell people, yes, I'm this, that, and the other. Well, that's a short one. I hope that'll help some of you. Sometime you can write me a letter. Sometime you can make me a phone call. List your questions. It'll save time. And if I can help you, I'll try my best. This is Randy Pike saying we're shutting out another one. We'll be back soon. Cheerio.